I'm excited for you to learn the grand adventure of child-proofing your knife collection. And actually, Ryan. Yes. We're gonna help you out with that. All right. There's these boxes over here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what is this? Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today is the most anticipated day of the year because Ryan from CRKT is here. Oh, man. How you it means been? a lot, George. Been good, been good. Yeah, what's new? Uh, got a, a lot of new stuff for 24. Uh, we have some new designers, some new materials, and some new mechanisms. I'm going to show you our new automatic knife designed by Philip Booth. So this is going to be a scale release knife, which is really unique. Um, there's actually two different models. There's going to be a blacked out version. I was showing you this off camera, so I think you know how to operate it, correct? Yeah, so it's one of those fancy slide releases there. Yes, yeah, some people call it hidden release. Uh, we're mm -hmm. calling it a scale release. Scale so you, release. Yes, yeah, so you can hit it with the, kind of the fat of your palm mm -hmm. for deployment. Um, or you can kind of go like this, and that's how the, that knife's going to release. Uh, we're really excited about this. This is our um, partnership with Hogue. Mm -hmm. So everything uh, has to be American made when you're manufacturing an auto, mm -hmm. from the parts to assembly, um, everything involved. And so we have a great relationship with Hogue and we're bringing these to market in 24 and we are extremely excited about it. We have our blacked out version, like I'd mentioned, with MagnaCut blade steel. I love to hear it. Thank you, Laren <laughs> Thomas, right? Yeah, what a legend of a man. Legend. <laughs> so um, amazing blade steel. And then moving back, we ha uh, like I mentioned, this is designed by Philip Booth. So he has his signature stripe there. Um, and then it's going to be G10 scales, uh, nice pocket clip on the back, easy to, to fold close as well. And then it deploys with that nice action as well. So we've been asked, I mean, I've been working at CRKT for, for over 10 years now. I've been asked at every trade show, autos, 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 when are you gonna have autos? I've always said, it's, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, and they're finally here. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna tell you, I'm very excited about this for a few reasons. Okay. First of all, I love a laminate handle, and a lot of the time with autos, you're getting aluminum, or titanium, or steel, or something. And it, it, like a full G10 handle like this is a rarity on an auto, and I am loving it. Because you get a lot of, like it's not heavier, but it gives you a bit of a broader handle, so you get a really solid grip on it. Yep. And another thing I love, you understand this, you just had a baby, right? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, just had a baby. Okay, so I have three children now. Okay. And my oldest is four. Wow. And he is quickly becoming a knife nut. I've never <laughs> been four more four years proud. old, I love it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, in fact, the knife I'm carrying today was the one I chipped out of an ice sculpture last year. Oh, look remember, at that. Remember the ice sculpture? It lives in a jar now. <laughs> 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 ice sculpture. Ice sculpture. For in case there was any doubt, it's not just a puddle of water. The ice has been broken. Yes. That, luckily, we're buddies. We're old yeah. friends now. Yes, we are. Yeah, but he, he stole this out of my pocket to cut himself a cupcake. It was really lovely. Wow. Yeah, so I'm kind of terrified because, I mean, this was the razor fixed blade. By the way, I've carried it a lot this year. Quick review. Keep this edge razor sharp. This one kind of like sharp, but like pryy scrapey. Yeah, there we go. It will serve you very well. Anyway, but this is a fixed blade, and he's going to cut himself on it. But this, I don't think he could fix. I don't think he could pull it open. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those knives that you hand to somebody and be like, hey, let me see, you know, see if you can open this. But once when you get it, very intuitive. I mean, you just push down there with, you know, like, I like to say the fat of my palm. I don't know if that's correct or not, but that's just kind of what you do. Or, you know, you can hit it, I think you were doing it. Which with your thumb? That way, yeah. yeah. Either way works, uh, yeah. We're really excited to bring autos to the market. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited for you to learn the grand adventure of child-proofing your knife collection. And actually, Ryan. Yes. We're gonna help you out with that. All right. So, there's these boxes over here. I didn't even see those. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they were disguised. Okay. So this one's from me to you, and the, the other one's from Blade HQ to you. Okay. This one is first to yeah, help you. Yeah. Be gentle. Yeah. This one doesn't yeah. want to get cut. <laughs> okay. Actually, I'm going to use this knife. Is it this knife? All right. Which one is it? Let's see. Oh, the Colby. I've been, I've been carrying this guy. Okay. So, perhaps the most important uh, thing oh, you're going to be carrying around. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, my gosh. 
My little baby girl is going to love this. Daddy's EDC. <laughs> Daddy's Aww. EDC. This is fantastic. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And then I'll tell you, as a gearhead like yes. you, I, I quickly learned having three kids that the vast majority of equipment for the handling of children is built for women. Okay. And like, oh my goodness, my wife's diaper bag, my wife stands four foot nine, so she doesn't care. Okay. But I like pop stitches on the diaper bag when I put it on. So, with the help of tactical baby gear. Tactical baby gear. Yeah, this one take a knife too, I don't care. This is <laughs> fantastic. Oh yeah. my gosh. This Christmas is... came early. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what is this? This so, is amazing. I know that CRKT has the Forged by War program, and I know you know a lot what? of guys who use plate carriers, but this one is Are the baby carrier. Are you kidding me? This is amazing. Yeah, and it's big enough. It's going to fit your shoulders. I know you work out. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been working out much lately. This is so freaking cool. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and this ain't over yet. It's not there. over yet? There's more? There's more. Here you go. Seriously, Tactical Baby Gear hooked us up. If you like us baby gear. are a gearhead and a daddy, this is the brand to check www. out. www.tacticalbabygear.com? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh and then this one gosh. is the diaper bag. This is so freaking cool. Yeah, so let me show you some of the okay. awesome features okay. of this one. Let me see. So it's got the hip belt. So you so have this one. I wish. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So it's got the padded straps, so if you're really laid in down, and you can pull this thing off, you got your baby changing zone right here. Look at it, with the bullseye. With the bullseye, yep. Look at that, poop zone. Yep, and the padding that's for your back is also for baby's back, and I know that Ryan's little girl is gonna be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, this is so good. Yeah. Look at this thing, gotta test it out. Mm -hmm. I almost just wanna wear this as I'm gonna finish the presentation <laughs> here. Yeah, oh and my what I like is also that you can do both at the same time. So you're like going on a hike or taking your little one to the shooting range or something. Don't do that. But, <laughs> but yeah, this is baby so gear. cool. Oh my God. Ryan, you're going to be the best dad in the world. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. This, I mean, can I write these people? Like, yeah, go right ahead. I'm going <laughs> to send them an email. This is so cool. Yeah. Wow. Well, oh, the soft patch for the baby's head. I was going to say, I mean, <laughs> God, they thought of everything. Yeah. Wow. The story behind Tactical Baby Gear is it's a military veteran who helps raise his kids. And he's like, there's no stuff that's built for like a man who's worked out, is a bigger fella, but wants to raise his kids. And that is what we're fixing out. And, and you're a tall guy, now you can be the best I'll dad. Be the, the <laughs> coolest guy at the park. Darn right. You already <laughs> were. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I need a little extra help from, from Tactical Baby Gear. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, and then this thing is, is awesome. Look at that, CRKT Blade HQ on the back. Mm -hmm. Wow. Also, I'm, get I'm yourself a, one of these. I'm it's at a loss for words. <laughs> it's going to make it yeah. easier when oh, you're talking. And, and we by the way, yeah. <laughs> and I completely forgot to even mention the name of the knife, George. Oh, yeah. Tell me what. This is going to be the Mishika. Mishika. So it's designed by Philip Booth. He is from Ithaca, Michigan. So, Mishika. Mishika. So, completely forgot that. It's a fun name. Yeah, yeah Mishika. Mishika. Yeah, I will be picking up a Mishika, mostly because I love autos, I love G10, I love Magna Cut, and I love not cutting my kids. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. All right, well, that's, that, that's the, uh, the first knife. Um, man, I'm all thrown off. I just want to <laughs> wear, I just want to check out this gear I got. Okay, back to more Philip Booth and more autos. Okay. This is going to be the Minnow. The, the Cali Legal Auto. Push button, boom. I was showing you this earlier. This is going to um, have the uh, magnet cut as well. Mm -hmm. It has the stainless steel bolster with micarta. Give it that really nice look to it. Mm -hmm. Cleaver style blade. It is under two inches, 1.68 inches. So it is going to be California legal. There's a huge market in California that's hungry for autos. Unfortunately, you know, you're, you're not able to get an auto over two inches. So we have the minnow, which I think the name suits it really well. Yeah, so this thing looks tiny, and it is, but look at this. I get four fingers on that hand. That is a four-finger guy. Yeah, and you get a nice Magna Cut blade there. And I'll tell you, I'm almost getting cigar cutter vibes here. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like a, I like a nice stogie every once in a while. Yeah, hi. I don't smoke cigars. Oh. I don't know. Maybe it's a, it's a, little, <laughs> a little hard on the tummy. <laughs> 
But yeah, really cool. And the deep carry pocket clip. Yes, that's... Sometimes with those California Legal Autos, they're like, yeah, we got to make it so it's easy to grab, but then a third of the knife is sticking out of your pocket. But, yeah. man. Yep, nice deep, deep carry. Yeah, just a, a cool knife. Uh, like I mentioned, we're really excited to bring out autos. This is just, we're dipping our toes in. We're eventually going to have more autos. Again, our partnership with Hogue, we couldn't be happier with them, and we're going to have some more in the future. I'll tell you, for dipping your toes in the automatic market, okay, maybe, this is the best maybe dip it's I've a foot ever seen. Or a knee. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're waist deep. I don't know. Yeah, but like, seriously, you guys came out swinging in that okay. space. All right. Very nice. Well, thank you. All right, next, I want to talk about redemption. Okay, so this has been in the market for a couple months but it is sold out. We're sold out. We're trying to manufacture more. We've been pushing Hogue to, to manufacture more of these because it is so freaking cool. This is going to have a crossbar lock. Um, this is also going to be magnet cut. Super cool to close as well. I cannot say enough good things about this knife. So this is a Ken Onion design. His custom was named Dead Man's Hand. Um, and so Ken likes to pull inspiration from uh, a lot of times movies. And so he was watching uh, Tombstone and he wanted to come, come out with kind of a, an old, old school dagger knife. Um, and then of course, Ken Onion made it a, a folder, an awesome folder with a crossbar lock. Mm -hmm. um, and so this um, kind of pulls back to Wild Bill was, was carrying a, a, dam, a gambler's dagger. Um, and so this is kind of what it goes back to, harkens back to, to a time when it was the crazy Wild West, man, and you, mm -hmm. you had to have a knife on you. Yeah. So, Tombstone, great film, by the way. Amazing film. Thank you for not naming this the Huckleberry. <laughs> I'm your Huckleberry. I will forever thank you for that. But, yeah, the Dead Man's Hand, I love, and it, 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 I almost like, it has the cowboy vibes, but I'm also getting kind of like vampire vibes almost. Interesting. Yeah, okay. super great. And I'll tell you. And how smooth is that crossbar lock? Also, I don't know if I mentioned a magnet cut as well. Dang. You got your shield on there. You got your stainless steel bolster, nice G10. You can also flip the, the pocket clip around. Righty, righty, lefty carry. Yeah, very nice pocket filler there as well yeah, for you, the clip on the other side. So there, there's not going to be a like a hole on the side of Yeah, your yeah, which doesn't look great. USA made, like, like I mentioned, there's a partnership with Hogue. So, yeah. yeah, so I'll tell you what I love about this. Please tell so me. So a lot of the time with crossbar locks, they have a thumb stud or something, mm -hmm. but I find myself just using the lock and the gravity. This one leans so hard into that because when it's closed, you get full obfuscation of the blade. I almost wonder if you could grind a second edge on that and be fine. Hey, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> okay. But yeah, it's, it's really nice. The big knife, a very slick gravity knife almost. Yep. I mean, it's not a gravity knife per se. But yeah, we don't want to use that term. Yeah, don't use that term. <laughs> but like it, like you don't have to touch the blade to run it, which is yeah. a really awesome feature in my opinion. Yeah, and then it looks <laughs> almost as good closed as it does open. You know, and, and this is what uh, we we're having a conversation with Ken. He wants knives to look as good closed as they do open, and so it's just a, a really good looking knife. I had to show it, even though it, it it has been in the market for a few months. It is so freaking cool. We can't keep it in stock. I had to show you. Yeah. I'm more than happy to talk about it. I love Ken Onion Designs. Oh yeah. Okay, moving along <clears throat> to a new designer for us, Mr. D Rocket himself, Daryl Caston. This guy is already a legend. This guy is mm. pumping out some amazing models. And so cool story behind the Minimal X is he was commissioned by SpaceX to um, produce 100 knives for the crew. And so he actually made this specific model for Elon Musk himself. Dang. How cool is that? That's and so cool. we were able to, uh, to produce these. Um, and since I know you're such a D-Rocket fan and, mm -hmm. and Elon Musk fan, I brought you your very own, George. My very own? Your very own <laughs> Minimal X. Oh boy, I'm in love. So, man, you, who told you how much I love the top edge? Who told you? <laughs> I must know. Just a good guess. <laughs> Just a good, good guess. guess. I'll tell you, that is a feature I want to see on a whole lot more knives. And Daryl Caston, I've met him a few times. One of the nicest guys you'll nicest ever meet. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. And, and then also you see there with the edge, and the shape of it on the back end. So it just, it all flows together. You got your nice folder in there, um, stainless steel. 
using 12C27 Sandvik steel. Uh, just a good looking model. Uh, this is what I've been carrying for, I don't know, ever since we came out with this. this we dropped this two months ago. Um, mm -hmm. Also another knife we can't keep in stock. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just a, a really cool, unique model, but also the backstory, um, I, I think is, is also really cool, so. Yeah, Daryl Cast, what a guy. He is. And what's up with SpaceX ordering knives? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> if there's a space program, it needs a blade. Yeah. And like, I, I remember there's another brand that made the knife that went to the moon. And if you look at it, you're like, what in the world are you doing on the moon with that? But this, if I'm in space, like I gotta open a package, I gotta pull a screw off the side of something, I gotta pry space junk out of the whatever on my walk or whatever. I would want something smaller like this because then I'm less at risk of puncturing something that's gonna, you know, kill me. I mean, even astronauts <laughs> love knives, man. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> knife nuts as well, as well, you know, so. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to show you our premium version of the Minimal X. Okay. So this is going to be the Mambombo. So it's just going to be, uh, obviously just blown up a lot larger. Um, and so really sleek design, uh, kind of looks like almost, I don't know, a Tesla, if you will, with, <laughs> with that sleek design. This has a cutout here for the flipper, um, obviously really uh, unique blade shape. So this is going to be the Minimal X, but just a little bit larger, more of a premium offering. So that is going to be obviously domestic steel, acid etched. Um, yeah, just titanium handle as well. Mm-hmm. So, Damascus. Damascus, and that I is a pretty suit. Damascus It as really well. is. See if we can catch that in the light or something there here. There we go. Gotta so, get the angles. CRKT, like, like, you don't have a whole lot of Damascus in your lineup, right? We're starting to now, yeah. So, th as I mentioned at the start of the video, we're, we're you know, we have new designers, mm -hmm. but also new materials and new mechanisms. You know, we're, we're you know, you're not resting on your laurels. You're no, pushing we're not. Envelope we're every we're always year. pushing, always <laughs> pushing. We we have an amazing team in house that is always looking for the next next best thing, and we're working with the best designers in the world to come out with amazing products. So yeah, that pocket clip is really interesting too. Look at that. So they have a little block that bumps it up here, so that way yeah, it's sta on standoff a little bit. Yeah, so that way you're going to get a nice and easy pocket. It sort of functions like a milled clip but you're not gonna get the crazy tension of a milled clip. So some people like that tension, some people don't, and it lands nice and smooth too, not gonna tear up your jeans. Man, Daryl Caston, keep it up. <laughs> he is the man. Yeah, you should follow him as well on, on Instagram. He's, he's a good follow. Um, okay, another uh, premium model I wanted to show you guys. Uh, back to Ken Onion himself. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the upgraded stylus. So this is going to be, you know, simple, streamlined, just a great EDC, um, just improved on the original stylus. And so this has uh, IKBS, it is not going to be assisted like the original, so it flies out. You have, you know, a little bit of flare in his custom, you have your uh, milled out flipper, you got your, um, you know, lanyard hole in the back, extremely lightweight. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, that is also going to be S35 um, VM blade steel and then titanium handle. That is also gonna be on standoff there with almost uh, a similar pocket clip to the Mombombo. But yeah, so it's gonna stand off a little bit. You can get it you know, in and out of your pocket a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So that is just a classy gentleman's knife. Yeah, look um, how slim that blade is with the yeah. tall flat grind. This thing will slice like nothing. Yeah, that's nice thin blade stock. That is also just, and open it again. I mean, I, I think the opening, it's just so smooth with the IKBS ball bearings. Oh boy. So when blades get really thin like this, you don't really get that drop shut action too much. But I mean, with just a little shake, it's down. So I mean, if it were a thicker blade, it would drop like that. Yeah. But like actions like this with blades this light are few and far between. Yep. So that is going to be our stylus. Uh, sticking with Ken Onion, mm -hmm. we are moving along to the Homefront Compact. So we came out with the original home front a few years ago that had the field strip takedown mm -hmm. uh, mechanism. Then we moved along to a home front that had an assisted opening mechanism. Now we have the upgraded version that's gonna be, you know, kind of shrunken down. You really like this off camera. I think this is a great size. Uh, you know, no assist here, blacked out blade. Um, and it's gonna be S35 VN blade steel, but it has all the same World War II kind of aesthetic that the original home front had. Um, just so freaking cool. I love the colorway. I love the blacked out blade. 
um, yeah, you know, it was so successful that we wanted to come out with a third iteration, so. Yeah, so Ken Onion has a gift, and this is his gift. He can take something with an inspiration and do it so well. Like this has the nods, it's kind of got the tank tracks here. Yeah. It's got- The GI star. Yeah, the GI star on the pivot. It's like, it, it feels very reminiscent of the World War II knives. He was, watching World, II he was watching World War II documentaries and boom, home front. I mean, this guy just has a concept or has an idea and then makes a knife, b builds a, a, a whole, you know, whole knife. It, it's insane what he does. Yeah, he's, and he, and he's he a magician. He could have done one of those gas station knives like where it's the shape of a pistol and you pull the flipper and the knife opens and it's unusable or ergonomic. He could have done something like that, but no. He made all the nods in the right places, but made an excellent knife. Great ergonomics, usable design on the blade. Ken. Yeah. Also, I really like the G10 on that. It has a little bit more texture, a little bit mm -hmm. tackier. Um, also, I think the colorway goes really well with the black, so. Mm -hmm. That is going to be our home front compact. Okay, next we have a new designer. This is Pedro Buzetti. Uh, he, do you know Flavio Icomer? Have, have you met him before? Uh, yeah, He's one in of fact, our... my wife carries the civet around. The okay. An old Icoma okay. design. I nice. think it's discontinued now. <laughs> yeah, um, I know exactly what knife you're talking about. Um, okay, so Pedro has been working under uh, Flavio for I think six years now, and this is his first production knife. So this is going to be the Padwan which is, you know, young Padwan, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, coming into his own, coming out with uh, knives um, on his own. So this uh, is pretty amazing to be his first production model. Um, so this is going to be um, G10, where the other version that you had is going to be Micarta. So a little bit different here. Mm, and Micarta in the backspacer too. Yes, yes, that's nice. Nice call out. Mm -hmm. So, um, a little bit different on the blade shape as well, so that's gonna be more of a traditional drop point where that's gonna have a little bit deeper belly. Um, obviously the color's different as well. Um, I think that is a nice color for micarta. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that brown works really well. Patina's um, really nice too. Yeah, so um, yeah, stainless steel with a G10 overlay, stainless steel versus my, micarta overlay. That's gonna be 14C28N mm -hmm. on the blade steel, so extremely slicey blade steel. Um, yeah. Loving to see the Sandvik's make into the CRKT line. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sandvik does not get enough love, man. It is a really great steel. It sharpens really well, holds an edge, and man, it's... I like it because I'm not great at sharpening. <laughs> I have so many knives that once when it's dull, I just pick up the next one. I've tried <laughs> to sharpen. Friends at Workshop, love you guys, but man, it's, it's a me problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, Sandvik steel is really easy to sharpen. Yeah, and it's crazy tough and it holds a good edge. And in fact, Laren Thomas, Dr. Laren. Yep, Dr. Laren, Dr. Laren, sorry, Dr. Laren sorry, Laren sorry, Laren Thomas. Laren, I did not call him doctor. Um, I, I read his article about 14Z28N and he talked about how its grain structure is a lot finer than a lot of non-particle steels are, which means that, that gives you the toughness, but also if I th you're- I think that just went over my head, but. Uh. <laughs> well, what it means is you're gonna have a really tough steel and if you really want and you put your mind to it, you can get like Adam splitting sharp edges on this blade. I, I get that. <laughs> Thank you for dumbing it down yeah. for me. <laughs> Not everybody around here likes to nerd about steels, but sometimes. <laughs> You'll get there too. I, I'll get there, <laughs> yeah. I'm a little challenged. <laughs> so um, again, this is the, uh, the Padawan, which I absolutely love the name. Big Star Wars fan. Yeah, if I were to get a Padawan, I would find a way to affix a lanyard to it maybe, maybe just hang it off the pocket clip, and I would make it look like the braid the Padawans have. Oh, there we go, now you're thinking. Yeah, my mom would never let me grow one. She's like, you will look dignified. And I'm like. I mean, I think it's called a rat tail, right? Yeah, <laughs> honestly, looking back, thank you. Thank you, mother. <laughs> thank you, mother, as well. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that, but it could be cool on a night. No, it could, it could be cool. <laughs> okay, uh, moving along to Mr. Lucas Burnley. A uh, great buddy of ours, been working with him for you know 10 plus years. Uh, this is going to be his new model called the Ibis. Um, so uh, Lucas pulls inspiration from nature. You know he's come out with the squid, um, the tuna, the heron. So Ibis is actually a bird that their beak is shaped very similar to the uh, recurve on this blade. Mm. Also the color is awesome. So it's going to be kind of a Tiffany sky blue colorway. Um, I really like the, the G10 there, like the dimpling on the G10, um, I think gives it a nice you know, character. That is gonna be 14C28N as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And this one's a manual, not assisted. It is not assisted. Um, you actually opened that earlier with the, with the thumb stud. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, you can go either way. Um, I'm more of a flipper guy. Just, uh, I don't know, it's just by, by nature, I guess. I know there's a lot of thumb stud guys out there. One of my coworkers swears by the thumb stud. So. Yeah, I think I'm generally more of the thumb stud kind yeah. of guy, but. I think um, I need to elevate the thumb stud. <laughs> no, I think, I, I think there's a, a good place for both. I know that my natural way to grab a, ha a knife handle kind of has my fingers not on the lock bar, so a thumb stud works for me, but sometimes people want to grab the knife more like this, where they come and actually are on there, and that can, when you're pushing on a thumb stud, this one's actually a really good detent. But there's some knives out there where if you're pushing on the thumb stud and you have your fingers on the lock bar, it is going to be impossible to open. But a flipper can beat that a lot easier. So I respect flipper users. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that is um, the Ibis by Lucas Burnley. Uh, moving along to Richard Rogers. So Richard has uh, done many knives for us. Um, the Did you just call him Sir Richard? Uh, replay. So Richard has uh, done mini knives for us. So Richard. I don't think I'm gonna I call him Sir Richard the next time I see him. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean S Sir Richard. He's actually a rancher, so maybe, maybe he wouldn't like that. I don't know. Maybe he would. I don't know. I don't know. He, he, he's not a rancher. He's a knight who owns a manor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, rancher. <laughs> rancher. Um, okay. So Sir Richard Rogers. So he has done our CEO line. Um, he does a lot of, you know, kind of sleek gentleman's knives. He wanted to come out with a ranching knife. This is actually, I, I had a conversation with him. This is something that he would carry on his ranch in New Mexico. So this is going to be assisted opening. Uh, this is called the Persian. Obviously you can see that upswept blade. Uh, really useful for, you know, really any cutting purposes. Uh, this is gonna be glass reinforced nylon, D2 blade steel, really tough blade steel. Um, and you know, it's kind of a departure from what he normally does, but the action on that thing is sweet. Really cool, you know, lines to it, flows really well. Um, I love it. I do too. So recently I wrote an article about traditional knives. Okay. And I think Richard Rogers came out with a slip joint through you guys not too long ago, yeah? Yes, yep. Yeah, so I, I, was, I was talking about the Stockman yeah, knife. Yeah, the, the symmetry. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. But the Stockman pattern is the original rancher's knife. Yep. And it's supposed to have all the features that you need to do all the ranch tasks. But I think with this, you get a lot of the functionality out of your Stockman. You're going to get a nice stout here on the D2, but a very precise point, and then a very long belly, and you can choke up, and if you need to uh, do that thing to the bulls, <laughs> you can do it with this. Wow, go in there. <laughs> go in there. I, was like, I mean, that's a job that ranchers hey, have to do. it's a job. Yeah, but here's the thing that this has that a Stockman will never have assisted opening, one hand, and how often are ranchers doing jobs where they are, like their hands are full? You don't really often have a nice opportunity to pull off a second hand, but this, just pull it out of the pocket, assisted, do that thing to the bowl, and you're done. It's so good. You sold me. <laughs> Rancher's knife, a nice big thing so you're wearing the leather gloves, and then texture not only on the flats, but on the sides. Yeah. I'm sorry, I like the Persian a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool knife. I mean, that is just a good looking knife. Even if you're not a rancher, I think this is, this is a great knife. Okay, last but not least, I wanted to talk about our Bear Claw. So our Bear Claw has been in the line for 12, 13 years. Um, and this is something that we actually discontinued last year. We had so many calls into customer service and emails saying, why did the Bear Claw go away? What's going on? I need the Bear Claw. That we actually brought it back into the line. And so we have three models. So I'm gonna give you the original tactical version. So that's gonna have, you know, kind of that, that tactical uh, blade shape. Then we also have two models that are gonna have a blunt tip. So this is great for uh, white water rafting, put it on your PFD, also great for rigging, any type of emergency use. Um, so you can go up there and make any type of cuts. What's great about the bear claw is it's almost like an extension of your hand. So when you're, you know, doing any type of cutting task, it's almost like your index finger, right? Mm -hmm. And super, you know, you have control. And then if you're up doing anything, um, you know, you're in the power lines or something like that, you can actually have a free hand, even though you have your knife in your hand. And then you just simply hold it and you can do uh, really any cutting task. We have our proprietary VEF serrations on this model, as well as this model. 
So you can see the, the black version and then the orange version. Um, and then the sheath, Kydex sheath with the uh, puck clip on the back. And then you have the, the tactical version. Yeah, with so, that wicked point. Yeah, do not give that to your son. Will not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so th there's a few features about this that I noticed. One, I was asking you about this before we started. This little screw right here, I'm like, what is that for? And then I saw this little divot here. That is so you can mount that in the sheath and then still have access to the hole bringing it out. I know that a lot, I mean, if I were designing this, I would have said, okay, let's just have the plastic of the sheath come over here and have it hook there. But somebody a lot smarter than me thought, no, 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 we want them to be able to get their finger in the hole for quick deployment because this to me looks like an emergency knife. Yep. Something's going wrong, I need this now. Yes. I don't have time to fuss with my finger not in the hole, pulling it out, like this is just, so much cleaner and you get that screw there, but it's not a mechanism. You don't have to clean anything. You can just leave it there forever and it'll run perfectly. Yep, so this is designed by Mr. Russ Comer. Uh, it's gonna have Oz 8 blade steel on all three of them. And it's then yeah. stainless. Yeah, tough stainless steel. So we're bringing it back in line, everybody. You can <laughs> stop calling, emailing us. <laughs> Somehow my personal cell phone got out there and this guy was text messaging me about the bear claw. I was like, wow, it's gone too far. We need to bring this back in line. Yeah. Like I said, give the free hand, but like you can like still look at that. Run a, can ya? you? Maybe uh, not this folder. This might be a little big. I got that. Uh, no, nope, I'm not even gonna try. Okay, I'm gonna cut myself. But yeah, but like you could climb a ladder with this. You exactly. Could do all kinds of crazy stuff. Yep. Man, bear claw. Yeah, bear it's also claw. a fun name. It is. A, it is a cool name. So, um, George. Yes. As you had mentioned, I just had a baby. Mm -hmm. Um, my wife and I have been taking a ton of pictures of her. You know, it's like one of those things, family <laughs> wants to see it, friends, wants, you know, wants to see the new baby. So I've been taking a ton of pictures of her. Um, then it got me thinking of all the pictures we've taken as a company, all the pictures you guys have taken as a company, all the memes you guys have done. And I kind of want to come out with kind of a, a cool art piece that, you know, is kind of a mosaic of, of all of the, the pictures. Um, and I feel like your man cave <laughs> ne needs some sprucing up. So I came out with this cool mosaic that has all the pictures. You can find yourself in there. You can find, I think Bohan is in here. <laughs> we got, we got, uh, who else? I mean, we got everybody. We have a bunch of memes. We have a crying Jordan in here. <laughs> we have a uh, knife bay over here. I found Leong Ma. Uh, Leong Ma, we have designers. <laughs> So, hey, there's Mark. He's yeah, the CEO. Yeah, CEO. He's in there. <laughs> what else we got in here? We, we got a, a ton of different fun stuff in here where it's going to be not only product, it's Timote. <laughs> I think we got Dallas somewhere in here. Yeah, you made it. Fox News. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's Jacob Knudsen. Hey, look, it's me. There we go. What a guy. You with uh, <laughs> your jar of water. You <laughs> with my jar of water. Also, I got I brought some extra copies that if you have some, you know, CRKT fans out there, you can mail it to them, you know, if they I don't know how that's going to be done as a giveaway, but <laughs> this thing is freaking cool. It really um, is. I spent a lot of time on this. <laughs> I can only um, imagine. Our our, our in-house team uh, did an amazing job printing these out and just wanted to present this to you. So, wow, it's beautiful. And to be featured on the Noble M16 Kit Carson with the Vef serrations, man. Is, is there a more CRKT knife through and through than this one? There's not. <laughs> so there well, you thank go. Thank you so much. Yeah, you got it. So now you got a jar of water and you got a, a huge poster that you can put in your, uh, uh, above your fireplace. I should like build a shrine to CRKT at my house. There we go. Wife, please. <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> cool. And thank you so much for my gifts. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> for coming and visiting and showing us all the cool knives. Yeah, I love it's it. It's gonna be a great year at CRKT. All right, well, Ryan, what an absolute pleasure to have always, you back. Always, always, <laughs> every year. Yeah, so I gotta ask, what is your favorite new knife of the year? I'm gonna put this on. F <laughs> favorite new knife of the year? Mm -hmm. I would say, I mean, the Redemption. This thing is so cool. I absolutely love this. But I typically carry smaller knives. Um, so I would say it's kind of a toss up. If I'm going more budget friendly, um, you know, this is kind of who CRKT is. I'm going to Minimal X. I absolutely love this knife. But you know, if I'm trying to class it up, fill in a, you know, like I'm trying to hit the town in a suit or something, I might go with the upgraded stylus. I absolutely love this model. So this is kind of more my speed. But as far as what I like, it's probably, ah, let's go, let's go with Minimal X. 
Yeah, I, I think I think I'd agree with you there. Okay. I really like the Minimal X. I love Daryl Caston. He's a great guy. And I love that top edge. And now it's like if I'm carrying a different knife, I can just slip this in my fifth pocket and I still have the excellent scraping ability right there. Yeah. And then in the second place, we got the home front top. Oh, X. okay. All That's right. a sweet knife. Nice. Yeah. But all around a great, great show. And this isn't everything, guys. Um, you know, Go on bladehq.com. We got more 2024 products. So just wanted to give you a little sneak peek. So. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Ryan. Thank you all for watching. Find a lot more content from new knives and stuff here at Blade HQ. And if you're looking for that sweet knife from that sweet designer, CRKT. It's the brand. All right. All right. Thank you. We'll see you all next time.